Geneva Community Church. It is so nice to have you with us this morning. My name is Simonane. Today, Rian is going to share the message with us regarding our relational health and how important it is. We have also recently launched our brand new website where you can find out of all our events and so much more. We are also on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and on TikTok. Please, when you have time, go and subscribe and like and comment of some of the things and also share it to those close to you. We are very excited for today's service. Hope you enjoy it with us as well. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee and come and enjoy the service with us. Impact community, it is so exciting this morning before we go into our financial contribution to celebrate with you the wonderful generosity of the people in our community. We have over the last couple of weeks been rebuilding our kitchen here at the church and it has come from financial contributions above and beyond individual tithes and offerings. We had an individual sponsor the entire building material that we needed to get our kitchen renovated. And then we had a further donation of 27,000 Rand to go ahead and decorate, get the members, uh, get individuals to come and do the, the kitchen over. And every single one of those contributions went towards our kitchen. So if you are not part of our community, if you haven't joined us at our church, I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to come and join us here at our church, to not only be part of our community, but come and see this new kitchen. Come and enjoy a great cup of coffee with us. Come and enjoy a great uh, vibe that we're going to be having because all of this was donated by the generosity of members of our community. And that is why it is so wonderful for me to celebrate these kind of things this morning because God is busy working in our church. He's doing some phenomenal things and you are part of it. And if you would like to make a financial contribution to our church, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. Number one, you can go to our website and you can go click on donate and you'll be able to make an electronic transfer directly into our account via our PayFast account. Or you'll be able to use our banking details and make a direct electronic transfer out of your bank account towards our banking details and then you'll be able to make a tithe and reference it as tithe. And finally, if you join us here on a Sunday, we have envelopes where you'll be able to put your financial contribution in it as well. So wherever you may be in this season, maybe you are without work. I want to trust that God is going to give you a new work opportunity. You might be in a position where uh, there's debt that you've accumulated and you want to pay that off. I want to trust with you that that debt will be completely paid off in Jesus' name. But most importantly, I want to thank every single individual who has faithfully been trusting God and taking those bold steps of faith financially. Because you have made it possible for us to get involved in schools in our community where we are weekly providing 55 lunches for 55 kids that don't get lunches on a Friday afternoon. And your contributions make it possible. We have been supporting individuals in our community as well. And we are so excited what God is coming to do in our community because we're starting to get uh, involved in taking hands with an organization in our community called Kanisa. And if you want to know more about that, watch our social media platforms because there is some exciting news that we're going to get to share with you in the next couple of weeks. But before we go further, I want to pray for you and the financial contribution that you have decided this morning that you would like to make. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you are our provider. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the sustainer of our faith. And Father God, I want to thank you that this morning I can faithfully thank uh, on behalf of every individual that is trusting you this morning, taking that bold step of faith and bringing their financial contribution to the storehouse as an offering. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, that is an act of worship. We're saying, Lord Jesus, here I am. I want to trust you with this because I'm thankful and grateful for what you brought into our lives and that you are our provider. I also want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for every individual right now who cannot, who's not in a position to bring to the storehouse. I want to thank you, Father God, that they've got gifts and talents that they can bring and they can uh, do amazing work in the kingdom. And I want to trust, Lord Jesus, with every single individual that not only will there be breakthrough in things that they're trusting you, but Father God, that they would be uh, strengthened in the deeper faith steps that they're taking in their relationship with you. And I pray this all in your wonderful, most precious name. All God's people said, Amen. You'll see in a moment that there will be a, a slide with our banking details and you're more than welcome to go and join us on our website to find out more information. God bless you.
Impact Community Church is not just a church. We believe that we are a community for the community and that God has a special calling on our lives. If you want to know more about Impact Community Church or want to be a partner of Impact Community Church, join us at our new partners gathering at the church right after the service where we want to meet you and share our hearts and welcome you to our community. Can't wait to see you there. community just like to welcome you this morning and my name is Rian I will be uh, sort of just diving in on uh, week five of our transform series with you um, and yeah I hope you hope you guys are in- will enjoy um, I would like firstly to start just to remind us of our key verse because um, this key verse is something that we carry through every week and it will just keep us Uh, focused on our objective. So we're looking at Romans 12 verse 2. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you uh, into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's plan for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So today we are doing relational health. And uh, before we dive in, I have a question. I want us to ask this question. It says, what our relationships and what is their purpose uh, because sometimes we don't understand actually what relationships are and that can kind of hinder our growth um, when we talk about relationships so what I would like to do is I would like to use an example um, of something that we all are familiar with which is bride time <laughs> so if we t- look at an example of a stack of coals So you might be using wood, you might be using charcoal, or whatever your preferred method of brying is. But relationships can be explained in such a way where if you have a stack of charcoal or stack of briquettes or whatever it is, and they are lit and they are burning together, you have a nice setup for bry. And these things are interacting with each other because relationships, if you want to define it, is basically a result of one thing interacting with another. And that is a perfect example of things interacting to create something beautiful and something that is useful and that we all can enjoy. But now you also get the opposite of that, which is what happens or what is it called when you take one of those briquettes out and you put it on the side? That is called division, separation and isolation. And even though that briquette will look very beautiful and glowing for a few, maybe seconds, eventually it will wither and die. It will just become white again and have no purpose. And that in essence is what relationships are. They are a way for us to connect and stay connected because they help us grow. So in this example, you can only be in two states of being. First being connected with community, interacting, and in relationships. The second, being isolated and alone, disconnected and separated, which will eventually lead you to die. Relationships are there to help us grow. You can also use the example of the bonfire and the matchstick. For example, let's say someone organizes a bonfire. And we're all excited because we know exactly what a bonfire is. You pitch up, there's a massive fire in the middle. Everyone is just having a nice time. But imagine you say, we're having a bonfire. Many people pitch up. And there's a guy in the middle standing with a matchstick. That will not be the same. And that is not what relationships are. Relationships is when you can stay connected like that heap of briquettes. Okay. So the next question is, how do we then develop these relationships. Firstly, we need to understand 
the types of relationships there are, the people involved. Because sometimes we have relationships, but we're not really sure, okay, but who's involved in these relationships? So I would like to use this sort of diagram to say there's three main um, call it characters in this relationship. First being you, yourself, which refers to your personality, whatever your personality is. Secondly, people. This can be your friends, your wife, your family, whoever is involved, and this is called your community. Thirdly, will be God, which is your source. And those three will always be in constant relationship, whether they are close to each other or far apart. It's still part of the relationship. And each of those plays an important role because they determine where you are interacting with one another. Second point is that we need to understand what prevents us from growing. Now, the most common factor that prevents people from growing in their relationship is fear. And fear is usually, usually it leads us to have things, uh, uh, usually let's us say things like, for example, we are afraid to let people come close to us or we are afraid that they will reject us. We are afraid what they might think of us once they know what, what we think or what we do. And we also fear that we will lose control or influence in our relationships. And that is something that is, I, I believe that everyone is struggling with. They are afraid that if someone finds out what I've been doing or I will lose all my followers. Because <laughs> people are so focused on their uh, social influence. And the only way that we can answer or grow in these relationships is to first conquer this fear. So how do we do that? Well, that brings me to my third point, which is we need to first understand that God is a relational God. Okay? God created relationships from the beginning. If you go Adam and Eve created the relationships, he, he made this space for us, this briquette heap where we can connect. But then what happened? Adam and Eve happened. They messed it up. They took us and they isolated us through sin, put us to the side. And the rest of the Bible basically after Genesis is man trying to get back to the heap of coal, trying to burn bright again, trying to kindle that relationship again. But we failed miserably, as we all know. And it continues up until a point where God himself has to intervene. So what does he do? He sends Jesus, takes us, the only one that can, takes us back. And he doesn't just put us on top, he just pushes us in the middle so that no one can take us out again. And this is what we need to understand. God is a relational God. He created relationships. So that's my first point in this regard, is that we need to understand God initiated the relationship. He started it. We've already mentioned Adam and Eve. I'll use an example in Genesis 2 verse 18, where God has put such a value on relationships. He sees Adam and he says, oh, Adam looks lonely. Okay? And it's not good. He's lonely. I need to do something. So what does he do? He creates Eve. Genesis 2 verse 18 says, then the Lord said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. There God is already investing in the first relationship from the beginning. Then as we know later on, Jesus invests in the disciples. Firstly, he comes down from his throne to become a man to initiate the relationship between us and him. Then he chooses 12 people to have a further relationship with. And at the end of this journey that he has, before he goes to heaven, he says, uh, it says here in Matthew 28, uh, verse 18 to 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you, even to the end of age. 
And this is just an example of where Jesus is continuously pursuing a relationship with man. He said it to his disciples, and that was a command that is lasting generations, even up to this day, where he says, do not worry, I am still in that relationship with you. I haven't left you, I haven't forsaken you, I am with you until the end. And we can see this throughout the whole Bible. I mean, we've mentioned the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve was in this relationship with God that he created and then eventually messed it up a bit and Jesus came to fix it. But we also see it when Jesus intervened with the burning bush with Moses, where he initiated this relationship to talk to Moses and say, save the people of Israel. Get them out of Egypt. That's not where I need them. Then again, even before that, <laughs> with Joseph, the, the, for those who remember the raincoat, okay? Jesus sent Joseph through some questionable means to get to uh, Egypt to prepare a way for his people once again so that they can have food in a time of famine. Daniel in the lion's den. Jesus became the lion tamer. He got Daniel through a sticky situation where he was thrown into a den full of lions but was eaten. And so throughout the whole Bible, David, a shepherd boy who became a king, God initiated a promise, made a promise to him and said, You will become king of Israel. And then also with many others. And then finally it comes to the one with, with we should be focused on the most the Savior. God sent his son to initiate the relationship, to fix what Adam broke. And even afterwards, we can say the king is alive and still pursuing his people. And this is something that we don't understand because we are constantly still, even after knowing all of this, we're still asking the question, but am I worthy? Am I good enough? Is, is God even going to accept me for who I am? And then I would just like to then bring you from that point to the next, which is God's godly relationships are unconditional. And God is the one who also proved this first. You see, God, the creator king, surrendered his life for us, not because we deserved it, but because his love is unconditional. And this is something that we don't understand in this world. Our relationships are based on, I give you something, you give me something back. If, you, if one country wants to have a relationship with another country, they have to give each other something. You give me food or whatever, I won't blow you up. That's the type of relationships we have. But not Jesus. Jesus had unconditional relationships. Regardless of what people did, what... Uh, the world did against him. He still went and died for them. John 15 verse 13 to, uh, 13 to 15 says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. Now, it's, a, it's something that we can say easily. Like, oh, yeah, I'll, I would die for my friends. But only if we're on good terms at that current moment. You know? Sometimes we are thinking of, oh, the time that they did us wrong. I was like, okay, don't know if I would die for them in that moment. But Jesus had unconditional love. He looked at us even out of time and saw us in our moments of weakness. And he said, I am dying for you. If we look at Romans 5, verse 14 to uh, 17, it says, for the sin of, of this one man, which is Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this one man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of one man's sin. And this is because Jesus was perfect. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's love, uh, God's wonderful grace, and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it. Um, for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, 
Jesus Christ. Okay? And this is just emphasizes that Jesus came to fix what we broke, what Adam broke, what, um, what was something that we couldn't get ourselves back into that fire that's burning bright. Jesus was the only one who could do that. And I would like to get now to the final point, which is godly relationships. In order for them to grow, we must know that they have to produce fruit. Now, what do I mean by that? If we look at one of those, uh, the points that we mentioned, that sometimes we are afraid of losing the influence that we have around us. See, that influence is temporary if it is based on worldly things. But if you look at God's influence, which is, can only pr be produced by the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, that is what we actually want. Um, I would like to just use a quote um, of an unknown, unknown person. <laughs> it says, things of quality have no fear of time. Which means that on this journey that we have, nothing is going to be quick and easy. Lasting relationships take time. It's going through struggles together and producing the fruit that comes from going through difficult situations. That's what those difficult situations are for. In Galatians 5, verse 22, 23, we find a list of these fruits of the Spirit. And you will see each of them are linked to a time period. None of these you can get quick and easy. It says... But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things because they are produced by the Holy Spirit. And this is something that we have to remember. If we want to grow in our relationships, we need to make sure that our relationships are um, sort of like in relationship with God as well. You can't have relationship with people and let God sit on the sideline because He needs to be part of that because it's only through Him that you can produce lasting relationships, relationships that have eternal value. I would just like to kind of summarize what we've mentioned so far. Firstly, God is a relational God. Because He is a relational God, he initiated and started the relationship, which means we don't have to have fear of rejection because God is the one who initiated it. Secondly, godly relationships are unconditional. We don't have to fear failure. Failure is not what causes God to love us less or victories for Him to love us more. He loves us to the max. Thirdly, God relationships produce fruit. Why? Because this is the only way to truly have lasting influence. And through these three points, we have already conquered the fear that we spoke about previously. If we can implement these, fear has no hold on us. Because if we look at what fear is actually, uh, as an acronym, fear is faulty evidence appearing real. It's, it's something that the devil uses against us because if we understand the truth that God is a relational God then fear is out of the window and we can focus on our relationship with him and people now I would like to do a bit of a invitation um, this invitation is I, I basically wrote a little bit of a poem so I would like you just to listen to it and think of this relationship with God. Because it is something that is very important. I call on the broken hearted, the lonely soul, the forgotten, and the one who feels abandoned. Listen you who do not know or does not understand. The God of heaven and earth holds you in his hand. He made you. He loves you. He knows you and longs to walk with you. Don't you understand? The one who holds the stars in place and commands the winds and waves, 
is the one who bled and died on a cross that had your name. But now he is alive and well to call you his again. And I would like to close off with this because I believe that even if we're struggling with rejection or loneliness or any of these, we need to understand that God is a relational God and he's calling you to have a relationship with him. Let's just pray quickly. Lord, we just want to thank you for what you've done in our lives. Thank you for pursuing us. Thank you for initiating the relationship that we can have with you, Lord. I want to pray for each and every one that's watching this video and the friends and family of these people, Lord, that you would please be with them and guide them and draw them near to you, Lord. And as we go on this journey of trying to grow our relationship with you and to learn more about who you are and what our identity is in you, Lord, I just pray that you would just bless each and every person and just bring them to the understanding and revelation of you are the God in control. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I would just like to invite all of you to also join us um, for week six next week. And also during this week, uh, there will also be devotional, a devotional series that's happening that's relating to what we spoke about today, just to continue this growth and continue just continuously growing basically in relationship with God. So please join us with, um, on that topics. And it's going to be every day. So people will be sharing their personal views and their, their personal uh, take on the, um, on the scriptures. And uh, I think it's a, a beautiful way of just trying to get to God know more as well. Um, I would also just like to, on that same topic, invite you to check out all of those devotionals on Facebook, uh, social media, YouTube, everywhere. It's on our website. Please go visit it. And um, yeah, and I also want to use this opportunity to invite all the young people to just join us on Monday morning, well, Monday evening, sorry, to um, from 6.30 to join us at church where we will be also doing this devotional series and continuing growing together as a, as a family and as a group of friends. Please join us for that. May you have a blessed week and look forward to seeing you next week.